Hello, in this lecture we're going to finish up the master budget. We're finally down to the balance sheet where we can tie everything together. So I won't go through the whole thing again. We're on, the, we're on the balance sheet. We're on the last piece. This is the last piece that we need to complete. And within the balance sheet, of course, we have our assets, which we will start off with as normal assets. And we're going to start off with our cash. Cash being the first asset. Now, where is the cash going to come from? It's going to come from our cash flow budget. So we're going to scroll up here and say equals. I'm going to find my cash flow. And we ended off here at this 40,000. So we got this 40,000 there. That's our ending cash from the cash flow. And the next thing we have is the accounts receivable. Now, for the accounts receivable, we're going to have to do some calculation over here. We're going to go over here. I'm going to do another little side calculation. We're going to have to have the beginning receivables plus the sales on account. And then we're going to see how much we collected on those sales on account to get the ending accounts receivable. So the beginning receivables, if we scroll over here, we're going to say, where do we start off with? We go all the way up here and we say that on the balance sheet, we started off with 342, 248, 342, 248. That's where we began with. Then we had sales, total, whoop, I'm sorry about that. We got it over here, total sales. If we scroll up to our sales budget all the way up top, sales budget, we had 1,447,200 in sales. And then they told us that 70% of those sales, I'm just going to say 70%, it's already formatted as a percentage, home tab, uh, numbers group percent over here. I'm going to go ahead and make all this bold too, just so you can see it a bit better and make it all bold. So that's the 70% are um, on credit. The rest are cash sales, so they don't affect our receivables. We got cash at the time of sale. So... We're going to say of the total sales, 1,447,200 times 70% of those were on credit, meaning they increased our receivable. We didn't get cash for them. Then we're going to have the cash collected from credit sales, the stuff that we collected on the sales. So I'm going to say this equals, and I'm going to have to sum this up. I'm going to hit sum, and we're going to scroll over to where we have this budgeted. I'm going to scroll up here. We have the budgeted for the three months out. So up here we have uh, collections of receivables. So that's on July, August, and September, if we sum those up, then we get the 1,017,608. Uh, so that means that the receivables at the end of the day, this is what we started with. Then we had sales plus this on account. Those are the portion of sales on account minus the fact that we collected on these. These are the collections that we had on account. Means that we'll have an ending receivable of 337,680. 337,680. That is what's going to be in the receivable over here. So we have accounts receivable. And I'm going to say this number equals this 337680. Next, we're going to have the raw materials. So raw materials inventory. So we'll do a quick calculation over here as well for the raw materials inventory. We're going to start off with the ending raw materials, what we have. And it's going to be in units. We know what we had in units. So I'm going to say this equals, we're going to scroll up to our raw materials budget up here. So we're going to scroll up to the raw materials budget. And we see this ending budgeted inventory. We had this 4,000 right there. We're going to take that 4,000 and we're going to multiply it times 21 because the, it costs 21 per unit, $21 per unit. So there's the units, $21 per unit. Therefore, we equal the units of 4,000 that we had at the end times $21 per unit. That gives us the 84,000. So this number here, the raw materials inventory in dollars, is of course the 84,000. All right, so next thing that we are going to have is the finished goods inventory. So the finished goods inventory is going to equal, we're just going to scroll up to the cost of goods sold calculation. We have it right here. We calculated it right there. So it's a 321, 360. If you want to look how to calculate that again, you could go back to that video and check out the calculation to get to that number. Now we're going to go to the total current assets. So these are all of our current assets. So we're just going to add these up, of course. I can, we could underline it, home tab, font group, underline and then scroll over here and have this equals the sum of the 40 down to the 321.60. Uh, and that'll give us our total current assets. And then, of course, the next piece that we will have is going to be equipment. So we have long-term assets. We've got equipment. Property, plant, and equipment includes equipment. And the equipment's going to include what we started with. So if we scroll back over here and we take a look at where we were at at the beginning, 
we had 600,000 in equipment. So we had 600,000 and you'll recall that, that we purchased more. So I'm gonna say this equals the 600,000 plus, and I'm gonna say um, that this is going to be increased. If we go to the cash budget, we can see it there that we purchased equipment for three, 130 cash. Now, of course, again, this is assuming we paid all cash for it. In this problem, we did. We paid 130 cash. Therefore, we increased it to the 730. Then we have the accumulated depreciation. So we've got accumulated depreciation. And the accumulated depreciation, once again, it's going to be what we had before up here, plus the the new change that happened. So the accumulated depreciation we was before 150,000. So we're going to say, we're going to go back down here and we're going to say this equals 150,000 plus, I'm going to say the sum of, and the accumulated depreciation was that was under the uh, overhead and it was the fixed portion. So this fixed portion of overhead this 21 per month that that is the depreciation so we're going to i'm going to sum this up we could have just picked up the 63 over here but it's the 150,000 plus the 63,000 or the 21 plus the 21 plus uh the 21 and there we have that then uh if we have the equipment net equipment and we take the net value of that meaning the equipment less the accumulated depreciation to get the book value. We can also call it the book value of the equipment. That's going to equal the 730,000 minus the accumulated depreciation. Remember, the accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. Book value then of the equipment being 517,000. Now we can have our total assets. Total assets, we're just going to sum up the outer column are going to be the current assets and the property, plant, and equipment, or just equipment in this case. So it equals the current assets here plus the net equipment, the equipment less the uh, accumulated depreciation. Okay, so now we're going to go to the liabilities and equity. Liabilities and equity. So that's going to be our next kind of section here, of course. And then we're going to have our current assets or current liabilities, I should say current liabilities and those will include starting off with accounts payable this time and we're gonna have to do another calculation over here now this will be somewhat similar to the accounts receivable calculation where we will start off with the payable on the books so we're gonna have to go up to the balance sheet where did we start off with the accounts payable two hundred thousand five hundred two hundred five zero zero and then we only have purchases that's the only thing we use our payables for to purchase inventory so we can we can then go up to our purchases of inventory. We have the standardized purchase. We always buy all the inventory for the month and then we pay for it the following month. So we're gonna go ahead and say this equals and scroll up to our purchases area up top where we purchase the materials. So we're gonna scroll up to the purchases. We have the 611, 474 of purchases of materials. That's the only thing we use the payable account for in this company. So uh, then we have the payments for raw materials. Then So we have to sum up the actual payments that we made for the raw materials, which is going to reduce the the payable. So we're going to go up. We could find that on our cash uh, disbursements. So we have the cash disbursements here, and we're looking for the payments for material. So again, we could have just taken up the total, the six twenty three forty nine, or we could sum up the column again. It's going to add up to the six twenty three forty nine for July, August, and September. These are what we paid off. So the payable at the end is going to equal the payable at the beginning plus what we purchased on account, meaning accounts payable goes up because we got stuff and we didn't pay for it. We put it on credit minus the part that we paid off, like the part of the kind of the credit card that we paid off. That gives us our ending payable of the 191,625. So we're just going to say this equals, and I'm going to scroll back over here, that number right there. Okay, so the next time we're going to have the short term loan payable. So remember, we had the small loan to get us up to that minimum balance of 40000 We can pick that up. We can pick that up uh, in the cash flow. We, we needed this 8160 to bring us up to that 40000 there. So we have the loan 
And then we have the income taxes payable. Income taxes payable. So we calculated the income tax, and of course we haven't paid it yet at this point. So whatever's on the income statement in terms of income tax is what we owe, or what we will owe in the budgeted. So we have the income tax here. We owe that. We've, we're we going to uh, incur it and then owe it, of course, at that point. So we have the total current liabilities is then going to be the sum of our current liabilities. So we're going to equal the sum of this 191.625 down to the 23.263. We could underline this as well. We can go to the home tab. We can go to the fonts group. We can underline this as well. Then we have our long term. We have one long term liability, which is a long term note payable. And note that hasn't changed. We've been we're still at the same start part where we started from. We're paying interest on it, but the principal has not gone down. We've just been paying off the interest, paying like the rent on the money, still at five hundred thousand. We're just paying off the interest. So we're gonna go down here and we still got that big five hundred thousand loan that we owe back. So we're gonna have the common stock. Now the common stock hasn't changed. So we're gonna scroll back up here and say the common stock. We haven't issued any more common stock, so we're still at the three three five three three five zero zero zero. And so we haven't we haven't issued any more. And remember, if we issue common stock, that's kind of like uh, an investment if we were sole proprietor, the, the uh, more investors putting money in. We do, however, have a change in retained earnings. So we are going to have a change in the retained earnings. I'm going to indent this here. We're going to have our last little worksheet over here to uh, calculate that difference in retained earnings. And this will be kind of like our mini statement of equity here that will show us this, this change in retained earnings. So I'm going to scroll back over here and we're going to say our beginning retained earnings. The beginning retained earnings we had was 208788 So this is 208788 That's where we started with. And of course retained earnings goes up by net income. And we calculated that on the budgeted income statement to be the 43,204. And we also have dividends. So remember, that's the like draws. That's the amount that's that's being taken out or given to shareholders. And we, we see that that happened on the uh, cash flows, one place where we can see it. So there was this 10,000 of dividends that were paid out. So therefore, the ending retained earnings is going to be what we started with plus the income that was earned minus the dividends that were paid out therefore kind of the amount the earnings that are that still retained at this point are the 241.992 so that'll give us our total stockholders equity and we'll calculate that over here i don't know why i made this negative i'm going to make that positive i'm going to i put a negative sign in front of that i'm going to take that away so we're going to add those two up we're going to say this equals the sum of the common stock and the retained earnings so we have that and now we have our last number, which will, of course, be the total stockholders' equity and liabilities. Liabilities and equity. So liabilities and equity. And, of course, we're hoping that after we add these up, it'll add up to the total assets, and meaning that we will be in balance. And this will this is kind of my check number here. That'll go to zero if that's the case. So I'm going to say this equals the sum of the current liabilities, the long-term liabilities, and the stockholders' equity. And hopefully when we hit enter, this number will go to zero. If we hit enter, that's going to go to... And it... Oh, all right. So this number then equals this number. We are in balance. So we feel good. And that is the uh, master budget.